I was really lucky to be a recipient of a fellowship in 2016. And without that, um, and having that amazing opportunity, I wouldn't be standing before you this afternoon. So, uh, as Nick has briefly described, I work in this space with young people and this particular cohort of people are slipping through the cracks. Um, my focus is on the work education course. The course is great and it prepares the kids for employment. Um, and we were finding that they were reaching the outcomes at the end of their study. And I was finding myself in a position where I was um, pitching to parents and saying, at the end of the program, I will be able to find your son or daughter a job or some study, be it in mainstream employment, supported employment. Over the last four years, I've noticed a real shift in that and could see that I wasn't really being honest to myself or to them. Changes for all sorts of reasons, uh, competition, um, courses not being delivered any longer. So I, I knew I had to do something, but I wasn't quite sure. So I, I stumbled across some programs that are run in the States and in the UK, supported internships. So the more I looked at that, I thought, you know what, this is what I need to go and find out about. So um, it took me to uh, the UK and I spent three and a half weeks in London. And I had the privilege of being able to work through two colleges and that led me to spending time in five um, industry partner sites. It was just amazing what I saw. So this is what I wanted to do to investigate the vocational training opportunities. Thank you. Um, for young people with learning difficulties and disabilities. So ranging from um, a, lo a lot of kids on the autism spectrum, um, unspecified learning delay, dyslexia, anything, physical disabilities, uh, MS, um, any range of disability. And the supported internship programs are just not on offer in Australia. And this has already been outlined, the students are in this age group of 16 to 24. We found that there, I find that there are a lot of programs and a lot of opportunities for kids exiting from, se from secondary school, but not so much when they come into this entry level at TAFE. Um, so this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to develop the skills that were that, uh, to be developed by the employer and to demonstrate the value in the workplace. So these are the things that, that we are preparing the students for, but I wanted to add on to that. These statistics were really alarming to me as well, and what I discovered when I was away, that for this cohort of kid, that when they uh, finish a program and they're looking for employment, through mainstream employment channels, there was only up to, if luckily, an 18% success rate for getting employment. Any student that was going through a supported internship program, there was an 80% chance of getting employment, but six months later, we were seeing that there was a 90% retention rate. So they're pretty powerful figures. Um, and that six months later, more than 90% remained in employment. So all the way that I was away, and I'm listening to this, and I'm seeing these kids in operation, I knew that when I came home, I was in good shape. I knew that I had a really good course, and I knew that I had the cohort. All I needed to do when I came home was to find an industry partner. Easy. <laughs> so the best working model, it's simple. It's a triangle. You have a host employer, which is the industry partner, a college, and they work very closely with a disability employment service. Now that's what I wanted to do when I came home. Um, so by way of going through these things, I think I'll start now to talk about what I'm doing now and where we're at nearly a year down the track. Um, so I'm very lucky working at Holmes Glen. I've had 100% support from um, the CEO, the board, 
the de uh, Dean of my faculty, head of department and my working colleagues. So it wasn't hard for me to convince them that this is what we needed to do. Um, so we just needed, I just needed to go out and find an industry partner. So long story short, we have a partnership now with the Royal Children's Hospital. Um, it's been a really fast paced, quick journey. Now, I only got home from the UK last July and we started our pilot program in February. Um, had 10 brave students and their families who wanted to come on this journey with me and lots of managers and supervisors across 10 departments at the hospital. They had to take my word on this that we were going to deliver. 10 students who've been in a school environment, closed school environment, all of, all of a sudden finding themselves in an organisation where up to 8,000 people are employed. So we spent first term at TAFE uh, and I delivered the course to them. One day a week we went into the hospital. In second term we all started at the hospital and the day runs uh, from 9.30 to 10.30. The students are in the training room with me where I continue to deliver the course. Then from 10.30 till 3 p.m. they are in what we call a work rotation and they, um, they selected the area where they wanted to work. And as I said, they're across 10 departments uh, in the hospital. So we, uh, they work in one rotation for nine weeks and they have three of those over the course of the year. Um, at three o'clock, they come back to me in the training room and they stay with me then till quarter to four. And during that time, they reflect on their day, debrief what worked, share their experiences and support each other. While the students are in their work rotation, I go around and uh, talk with them, talk with their managers, talk with their supervisors and support them with any needs that they require. Uh, we've completed the third arm of the triangle and we have engaged the services of a disability employment service called Epic Assist and the model is working brilliantly. So they supply uh, and provide a staff member for me whom I call a job coach. Her role is to uh, support the students while they're in their working rotation as well, uh, where we can tailor um, our efforts and our support and our knowledge to what they need, and the manager and the supervisors. It, we're now at the pointy end of the year where we are, her job now is to get the students a job. So, you know, I've heard great things this afternoon um, about meaning and purpose, um, what's important, and that's what is important. Things having meaning, things having purpose, and this is a perfect example of uh, reinvigorating um, opportunity for uh, people, young people, who really didn't think that they were going to be able to come to much at all or there would be much out there for them. So as I said, now we're looking for the, for jobs for the students at the moment. Oh, gosh, okay, quickly. Um, we've got two students already who have started their employment and they've actually got their employment at the hospital. Laura has started in the Early Learning Centre and she's working two days a week and next year she will start her traineeship in a certificate three in early childhood studies. Um, another student, Jack, he's uh, working one day a week in the central sterilising supply department. As an instrument technician next year he will also be studying a certificate three in that relevant qualification. Um, Another student also yesterday uh, has gone for uh, an interview as a clerical assistant in the emergency department at Monash Hospital. So it's opening so many doors and creating so many opportunities for the students. It's not only helping the students. The hospital has a, a commitment with their, through their people and culture department to 
really embrace social inclusion. So what I've seen in the year thus far, that when we presented to the staff and the management, um, their disability awareness, they had none. So what I could see by the end of uh, second term and the students' first rotation was this engagement in their disability awareness. And now that we're almost at the end, their confidence, their knowledge, their belief in themselves uh, is now disseminating naturally, organically, if you like, down through the rest of their, their staff. So it's really having these just amazing outcomes. We're running a research project through our clinical chair at Holmes Glen, and we have three, three cohorts of students back on campus studying the course as well. Um, this time next year, we will have our own reflective data to be able to demonstrate just how effective the pilot program has been. Uh, next year, we will be running the program again at the, at the Children's Hospital to consolidate our pilot program. We're starting now to get a lot of interest too about how we can roll this out uh, nationally. I just had a meeting this morning actually with the state manager from uh, Epic Assist and they have a presence in New South Wales, Queensland and Tasmania and she's really excited about how we can go forward um, next year and, and get it happening in another state in Australia. It's a new model, it it's just doesn't exist in Australia. It's exciting. Um, I would like to see that perhaps in three or four years time, that Certificate One in Work Education is not being delivered on campus, that it's being delivered in industry. Um, so I'll just finish, with, how long have I got? One minute. Two minutes. Two. So I like to finish with uh, a story um, one of my students, James. James is 18 years old. He uh, sits on the autism spectrum. Life's never really been that kind to him. He's always struggled with his education, uh, has suffered a lot of anxiety, depression, self-harm, and just going through the motions with his education. He applied to come into the program just because he thought, well, you know, what I've been doing isn't that flash, so I'll give this a crack. Um, if anybody had said to me at the end of term one, who do you think will not make this? It probably would, would have been him because he just didn't seem engaged in anything. On any given day, I would say to James, well, how was your day? And he would say, you know, four, maybe five out of 10. So when we started in the hospital, he had his first work rotation in the Allied Health area, which gave him the combination of um, working in the clinics, cleaning and restoring batteries and equipment in the hydrotherapy pool, um, moving through the clinics and making sure that the equipment was up to date, as well as some administrative tasks. His second and third rotation has seen him in the support, service, support services or reactive team. So in other words, he's been working as a hospital orderly. So after his first day in that department, he came back and his eyes were just bulging out of his head and I'd never seen such a change in someone. And I asked him how his day was and it was a 10. And his day, every day, has been a 10. He carries uh, a man bag every day with a notebook and a pen. He's taking notes constantly. Um, he, he's just, it, it is incredible to see a change in somebody. Uh, it is looking like he will be uh, taken on as part of this team next year. And they will also put him uh, into a traineeship next year. Um, he, he would just stand here and say, my life has changed. Why has your life changed, James? Because I've got a purpose, because I've found people who value me. I know what I can do, I know what my passion is. So um, that's what we're about. It's really exciting, it's just so wonderful to be part of such a, an exciting program. Who knows how many of these programs we're we'll running in the future, but I hope many. Uh, and so, as I said, 
cannot thank the, the Institute enough uh, to be able to have the opportunity to take on a fellowship, do the research, and then be able to come home and implement it back home. Thank you. Thank you very much,